Hey guys, this is the tutorial for the painting a hologram Q&A. Uh, this is like a small, small version of the full image that I did. This is just using a sphere. But first you want to put down uh, your main value, which is, that's kind of the color I chose for the light. And then I'm going to adjust the opacity so I can see what a perfect midpoint between this and the background would be. So that's kind of dark green. Use that uh, as the base, and I still keep the opacity down a little bit, but um, most of that stuff is going to be done at the end. So create a new layer, make it a clipping mask so it doesn't leave that sphere, since obviously we don't want the main the main image to be anything outside of that sphere. Uh, put out a highlight, which again I'm just I'm using a a light, bright, saturated kind of aqua color. Just because it's color wise, it's just because that's why I chose it. But the the bright values is so that it feels like you're painting with light. And then Gaussian blur, because again, this is a perfect sphere, so we don't really need a lot of texture. Put a little rim light in there, also on a clipping mask, so that it doesn't leave that perfect sphere shape. And Gaussian blur again. Now we've got a little rim light. And you can already see at this point, I mean, it's kind of, it's already looking a bit hologrammy. So here I'm just playing with turning up the intensity of the light area. See if I can make it a little, give it a little more depth. All right, so now that we've got the full sphere, there's a couple of different ways you can go about the next step. Um, here I'm showing, so actually I flattened it and I'm just trying out different levels of saturation and, uh, well, just levels from the adjustments levels menu. But I find it's good when I am creating the, the light halo to go around to make it feel like a light source um, to actually use the light layer if I can. So don't use the shadows, just, just use that highlight. Um, so I've copied that and I put it over on top, and wait, what am I doing there? Oh, okay, same thing. I'm just duplicating it to mess around with the saturation and the levels. And then put a Gaussian blur on it so that it's got the whole... The whole thing's got a little glow, and now I've taken the light layer, duplicated it, and not on a clipping mask, because when you want the light halos, nothing should be on a clipping mask, because um, now you do want there to be stuff going on outside of that circle. Um, I just take the light layer, copy it, and put a Gaussian blur on that, because then it just kind of creates more... A little more of a light glow in specifically areas where the light is brightest. Now I'm creating a little cone of light to come out of the projector, which again, I mean, that's even that's kind of like a stylistic flourish since uh, I don't know. I feel like if we actually if and when, or we might even in some cases, but when our technology is like this, I don't really know if you're going to get that cone of light coming out of projectors to show it, but since this is theoretically 
you'd be painting this for some kind of narrative purpose. It just helps to show that this is obviously a hologram and it's coming out of that projector. So it doesn't just look like a floating green ball. So again, same thing. Um, put a Gaussian blur, copy, copy that Kona light, put a Gaussian blur on it, and it gives it that little light halo. And then you can adjust the opacity on both levels to see if it uh, makes it more translucent in a way that looks good. If you've got things going on in the background, that can do a lot. Okay, so now we're going to put the scan lines in. Uh, I usually just draw a line and then tadpole it until I've got like 100 lines. So just copy, paste, merge, copy, paste, merge, copy, paste, merge. So it gets a little faster each time. And I made the lines red, so it's obvious what I'm doing. And try to keep the spacing as even as you can, because if there is a section where the spacing is particularly weird or different or off, um, a lot of times it stands out when you put the scan lines in. All right, so that's probably enough. Uh, merge those. Uh, I think it works best if you take all the light layers now and put them into a group. And then once you've merged them into a group, put the, the lines on a clipping mask that is uh, attached to that group. And then put the layer in subtract mode. And you get the little scan line showing up, but the way subtract mode works is however light your layer is, that's how much it removes from uh, what's below it. So if you make those lines white, which is what I just did, I adjusted them all the way to white, um, it'll make the lines completely translucent. So anywhere where there's stuff on that layer, it'll just mask it out. And then if you want to adjust the opacity at that point, I just use a little opacity slider in the layers window. So again, you can see you can kind of adjust the opacity as you want now. Um, you can always do more light if you want, just doing the exact same process as before. Just copy light layers and then put Gaussian Blur on it. Um, and I would suggest playing around with the amount of blur because you can either get like a small intense halo of light that is just barely going around it, or you can do large, really subtle halos, which can be nice sometimes. Give it a bit of that J.J. Abrams feel. And that's how you paint the AT&T logo. I'm just kidding. It's been a while since they've used that, I think. Putting a little extra highlights on there just to see if there's more I can do with it. All right, well, hopefully that helped you guys out, and I will talk to you later.